Hello friends, this is The Professor, and this is our new show, The Professor and Friends Podcast, recorded live in front of a studio audience of one furry feline. <laughs> and so this is a new format. Uh, this is uh, a show that complements the other larger show that I'm currently working on writing and I'll have to record a lot of b-roll for because I can't afford story blocks at the moment but um going to be an interesting episode if it all comes out right um I'll reveal a little bit about it it's going to be concerning the metaverse We'll be talking about that so it's going to be an interesting episode today is a little different um the format is some news and then our main topic which will be a big thing about star citizen and why why a lot of people really really need to be patient about this game because uh we're gonna be talking about some stuff that's coming up that's that's gonna be making this game a game. But let's get to the news. Uh, first, um, introduce TigerCon on the show. Right, Greetings. And, yeah. and let's get to the news. All right. Uh, first news thing is um, something that uh, I completely missed because I didn't see it in the news feeds. Sega is getting out of the arcade business. Hmm. They are no longer going to be producing arcades, arcade machines. They're going to be solely focusing on, uh, on console and also making movies. Because uh, they got into uh, making movies with the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which was actually pretty good. I saw it. And they put a lot of you know fan service in there for sonic fans and they loved it and they're doing it again with the next one they're gonna have tails the original voice actor for tails is playing tails in the movie from the games and they're gonna have um i don't know who they're getting for uh, knuckles but knuckles is gonna be in the movie this time but um yeah that um I don't know what's going to happen with the arcades that Sega owns in Japan because they own a lot. Because arcades have been for the longest time huge in Japan. They've survived a lot longer there than they did here. But uh, a lot of the stuff with the KUF going on has uh, really impacted that business a lot. And so they're not making as much money and a lot of them are, are closing down temporarily because of what's going on over there or what's going on with the COOF. I mean, I know it's they're relaxing things a little bit slowly but surely, but it's been devastating on that business like it has with a lot of uh, small businesses and, and other stuff and things that heavily rely upon traffic, you know, people to come and go. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, no more arcade games from Sega. That's, that's a big surprise. There. Kind of an end of an era in a way. Yeah, that's a, a big end of an era. Because they've been doing that since how long? Yeah, um. Because weren't they, weren't they doing that even before, was, didn't they, weren't they doing that even before they got into, uh, consoles weren't they like pinball or something, there was something yeah they, they were of... they were making they were making uh, arcade games even before they got into yeah. console games and that was back when they were an american company they were originally an american company based out of hawaii and then they moved to japan and that become a whole solely solely japanese company after that so, yeah, that's an end of an era for Sega then. That's an end of an era. I mean, they got out of the... They're completely getting out of the hardware business. Completely. Because they had their own arcade hardware. So, this means... And they're that, not doing consoles anymore, so... Yeah, they're not making consoles anymore, so they're yeah, just... Yeah, that would, that would pretty much mean... Yeah, they're out of hardware. They were out of the hardware stuff. Just another 
They're solely oh. just another game studio software house. studio. Yeah. End no of an more. era. End of an era. Uh, also, uh, someone issued death threats to Sega. Some like 54 year old guy in Japan issued death threats because he lost in an online game. It's like, you know, you got crazy people everywhere. You know, and he was, this guy was arrested and I guess him, he's going to be charged because they take that pretty seriously over there when you do that. I mean, they take it, they take it, they take that seriously anywhere uh, when you, hmm. when you do that sort of thing. And it's, it's kind of stupid, but I think, you know, if people are doing that, if people with you have people doing that they've they've had problems and i'm certain that you know the stress over the coof has um been getting to people a lot too so there's a combination of that he's probably a little unhinged plus mountains of stress at the same time and i know it affects a lot of people and you got to be careful how you let it had let it affect you because, you know, especially people with depression and stuff, you, 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 can, you can let things really, really get to you a little too much. And you got to be careful there. Uh, the last uh, news item, uh, I think I talked to you about this uh, before. But CD Projekt Red has announced um, that they are working on, on, on another game in the Witcher franchise. You They're mentioned it. Not using their in-house engine. They are uh, dropping the red engine, and they're going to use Unreal Engine Five. But there's more to the story than just that. They are going to be partnering with Epic Games to help them further develop the engine to equip it for mo for open-world games. So that it is uh, better capable of handling open world game design. If, so it's going to be. If they make that work available for Epic to incorporate into future versions of the engine, then that actually is a pretty good thing because then that helps yeah. everybody else make better open world games yeah. of who, for everyone who's using that engine. Yep. It's a multi year plan they have going where they will be working with them with on Unreal Engine 5 and future versions of the Unreal Engine to uh, to help design it for um, working with Unreal um, with open world game design which is it's collaborations like that that are great. really good yeah. because then you really are you're not only getting out the next you know potentially next great game you're also contributing to the community and gaming mm -hmm. overall yeah. the overall industry and so, yeah, I, I like that. I like yeah. the sound of that. Yeah. Part of the problems with Cyberpunk 2077 and its technical issues is was the Red Engine. I mean, they did upgrade the Red Engine for Cyberpunk from the, the version they used on um, The Witcher 3. But I think, um, much like a lot of engines that have been around for a while and have been upgraded and upgraded and upgraded, um, rather than rewritten, like Unreal usually gets rewritten over time, and I think that's what's happened with Unreal. About what Engine every 5. ten years ish, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's been. Yeah. Um, but like the engine that um, Bethesda often uses, that's been just that's the same engine that needs that needs an overhaul that, that ran needs, that needs to be lived, that's the same engine that ran Morrowind, the same engine that ran do Skyrim, the same engine that ran Morrowind. Do we know if, if Morrowind, Starfield is going to get that treatment? Do we know if Starfield is going to get using the same engine? Or it's the same engine as Fallout 4. They're using uh, 4. A, an updated version of that engine, which is an updated version of the engine they used on Skyrim, which is an updated version they used on <laughs> Oblivion and Morrowind. Um, Rather than... A little with, long in the tooth, isn't it? With bits and pieces rewritten or replaced, it's well, still... Well, there, there, there's good news and the bad news with that. There, there's good news and bad news with yeah. that. The good news will be that the modern community will be able to jump on that game and add a whole lot of content relatively quickly. Yeah. The bad news is that engine is dated as, 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 as anything. Yeah. And it's, it's buggy on a good day. 
Oh yeah. So I could imagine that there's going to be all kinds of issues with Starfield when it comes to the bug department pr pretty early on, right off the bat. Oh, it's a They're Bethesda gonna game. It's going to have bugs. It's a bug Bethesda game, of course. And <laughs> the kind of, that's Bethesda. kind of that's a feature for them. The <laughs> bugs are features. <laughs> They're Speaking. undocumented features. Speaking of features, that's where we get into the main topic of the show. Star Citizen. Uh, we've got a, just a bucket list of stuff coming in patch 317. 317's gotta be big. Uh, and and it's, it's the reason why a lot of these people who are just hating on the game and criticizing it need to learn some patience because we're finally getting some stuff in this game that makes Star Citizen a game, that makes it an MMO. Actually, not just an A MMO, a next generation MMO of what it's, what's coming. Now, these are not the complete features. Uh, one of them, the big one, is only a part of, of the feature coming. But it's going to be a huge sea change, and that is Quantum. And yeah. that is, that's a big portion of what this game, what will be driving well, this I, game. I want, I want, I want to speak to the first thing you mentioned there yeah. in terms of patience. And I think I, I've, I've noticed something mm -hmm. in watching, because I've watched a number of the YouTubers who, who cover Star Citizen, and many of them have been around since the beginning, since 2012, 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, we're, we're what, eight years into it right now, right? Kind of yeah. where we are. And I have noticed that there seems to be three waves in, in general of Star Citizen players. You have that initial wave of initial backers. Mm -hmm. Those are the guys who've been around for a really long time and they are the most frustrated. Yeah. A lot of the frustration I've observed have come from the oldest of the backers. The longer you've been there, the more likely you're to be cranky right now. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily everyone, but they're, they're, they're the ones who seem to be kind of fussed them up. Yeah. You've got our wave of around three, uh, what is it, eight, three point seven, three point eight. This is about the time um, Cobra TV joined. This is about the time we joined. There was a big wave of players that came in because the game, we had missed not having uh, client side con um, container streaming. I think we and dropped in about 2018. Yeah, we dropped in about 2018. This is circa 2018. Yeah. A lot of people joined around that time, and mm -hmm. that was just after, I think, um, most of the landing zones, except for maybe, say, Microtech, were in the game. Yeah. So, the, you know, it was, you know, things were a lot more complete. Things were, you know, a little more, you know, there. It, when coming from other games like Elite Dangerous, it felt more. Like a, it felt good enough, yeah. You know, we've seen worse, you know, but it 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 definitely, it didn't. It seemed different, and I think I noticed something too. The production quality, like Inside Star Citizen and Star Citizen Live, and all those things had come around about that time too. Yeah. Because see, I looked at it prior to all that. I had looked into it once a long time ago, and the video quality of their productions was yeah, amateurish. Yeah, like like YouTube video almost, not not the quality productions they do now, <laughs> and it just not like it, mine. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it it really felt like they didn't know what they were doing yet, and at the time there was a lot more issues and a lot more you know drama, and so people like me were just staying away from it. Well, even Linus Tech Tips and and uh, Jay's Two Cents and the Angry Video Game Nerd, all all of them started out just. Their, their video quality was way different yeah, than Yeah, but what, I, what I'm saying is they, were at the time we joined in, it's about the time they all, they seem to have had a, a, an evolution in their development. Yeah. Something had changed inside, inside, inside CIG and they had started getting better at what they were doing. Yeah. Um, they started wrangling down the patch cycles and getting it more consistent. They started, the production quality started going up. They just, they got better. And that was about the time you, me, Cobra, and a lot of others joined. That's wave two. Yeah. Wave three is a very interesting one because wave three came about because of Elite Dangerous Odyssey. 
Yeah. A lot of the players that were in the in, playing that game just got ejected from it because they just couldn't handle what was going on over there. It was just the game had become unwielding in terms of being able to play it, the performance. It just it became a mess, and they're still having trouble with it. Yeah. And those folks just wanted some alternative, and then that second wave was like, hey. Come try this. This seems great over here. And so they went over there. And for them, for those folks coming from Elite Dangerous, it was a bit of an upgrade. Yeah. And, I mean, because they were used to kind of funkiness anyway because of Elite Dangerous is yeah. day to day stuff. So for them, it was, it was, they, what happened was the big thing that burned everyone in there mm -hmm. was they were promised an Armstrong moment. Yeah. This is, this is the core of it. They were promised the ability to step off their ship and finally be able to or leave their ship and be able to step foot on a planet be the mm -hmm. first one there and say you know just look around just to walk out their ship what they got was instead of an armstrong moment they got a beam me down scotty moment yeah and it felt hollow and cheap and a few of them had tried star citizen after that just the, i guess just the giggles of it really mm -hmm. and then they started kind of like conversing it's like yeah this is great come try it and those people got their Armstrong moment, but it just but it wasn't from Frontier. It was from CIG. Mm -hmm. And they're like, this is what it's supposed to be like. Like Commander Will and Kate's like, oh God, they they just went they make all some great in videos. In yeah, they on... they they went. And the I think that wave three is a lot of you know elite dangerous refugees, especially Odyssey refugees who. And now that you had the console thrown out, it, it you've had three waves now of players who've come in. Yeah, they they because they they just can't fix this game. I mean, Elite Dangerous. They had yeah with Elite Dangerous, they've had to uh, basically abandon the console platform. And the first thing I noticed when I when I saw that was well, that means there's something wrong with the optimizations that they can't they can't get over there's some kind of technical problem they can't get past that gets into the story about cd project red and the red engine about them moving mm -hmm. moving away and from I, their own I, engine right and i think what's happened on the elite dangerous side is that engine was never designed for on foot combat or on foot play the, the engine just was never built for it yeah and i think when they tried that when they tried to shoehorn it in it just couldn't hack it there's probably some wicked black magic going on under the hood just to make it even work. And it's, it's just made the whole system unstable. And so now all their stuff going forward is going to be mired by this instability that they just can't seem to get to crack out. The only real way to deal with it, and they don't want to do it, is because they, they've kind of already admitted this to a degree without directly saying it, but they would need to rebuild the whole thing to do it. Yeah. To clean it up proper. And they just don't want to put that kind of time into that older game. No, they're just not going to make the investment. So you'll probably I'm I'm looking for them having another year of updates, and it'll be the end of it. Whereas Star Citizen in that year, I mean, just from what getting in this patch, we're seeing the beginnings of certain systems that we've been waiting for for a long time that are finally making their way in, and that that finally part's important. Because when you think about it, we've been, what, since 2016, really, since the, I think 3.0 came out. Yeah. Before so that, you're looking at yeah, before that, six years, what they really. were building is, compl what they were building before 2016 is completely different from what we got now. Yeah, where is that Star Let me think about it. that Star Citizen release history. Was it, was it, go ahead and talk while I'm looking was, for that. It was very different from what we have now. They did not have planetary landings, except for um you know the certain landing zones and you couldn't actually land yourself you you called atc and then there was a cutscene of your ship landing on a platform and then you stepped out of your ship and then there and then there you were at that landing zone and wow. the shops and stuff it was a complete it was a totally different game and you did have ship interiors and stuff like like you do today but it was very different and then there was that um vote that was done in the community okay then, here it is 3.0 came out december 23rd 2017. okay so so at the beginning of 2018 is when we got 3.0 2016 at citizen con is when they showed off 3.0 
and that was the game where just it, they just it just blew that up. That Citizen Con got them in a lot of trouble because they 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 seriously I've seen it and they did seriously like promise way too much. Yeah, way too fast. They stopped. That's doing what that. got them in trouble. They stopped doing that though after that yeah. back. After they that they learned that lesson the hard way. We did finally start getting a lot of that stuff that they did promise. They did start getting that. Um, yeah. So first... I think like the planets came in and a bunch of other stuff came in at that point. Yep. So you're looking at you're looking at about four to five years really of of the 3.0 stuff, and that's yeah. really when they were really hitting the ground running. Yeah. And so the, 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 it's the, not the, been but five six years in actuality the, yeah so the of game current development as it exists didn't even exist prior to them until they actually well they had two they it. had they had they had it did exist but it was Foundation a completely different animal back yeah. then i mean they they didn't have nowhere near the ships the, the the pu didn't really exist in the same way it does now yeah i mean like saying oh this game's been in development since 2012 and they only got this far well actually that's not actually true i think I mean, not if, actually you, if, true. if you look at the 3.0 line as the current line of development as opposed to building the foundations to get to that point mm -hmm. 2014 to 2017 really those that window of time that three or four years is really them going from a couple of guys, or maybe I think they said they had like 20 people working on it total or some small number mm -hmm. to having it really moving. Um, they were building the company and all that other uh, other stuff going on at yeah. the same time. So that I, I think that prior to that, really that that older era, they learned a lot. I mean, they've made mistakes. I mean, they're yeah. not going to say they haven't made mistakes. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. I mean, I mean, look at No Man's Sky, Hello Games. They made mistakes. Oh, Frontier, yeah. they've made mistakes. I mean, mm. I think what gets me is this burn them at the stake when it comes when it came to CIG, but and 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 a No Man's Sky. But it's like, oh, let's just be patient and wait and wait and wait and wait. When it came to Frontier, I, that to me always bothered me. Yeah, or EA or Ubisoft or Activision, all of them. Yeah, like and, they and get games a pass. Take a but... longer. Yeah, they get a pass. But when it comes and it came to CIG and and um, I think the media had a lot to do with a lot of that too. Yeah, they they saw that these people were in a weak position, they messed up and they took advantage of it and made a bunch of drama out of it. And also, and then everyone decided to jump on the bandwagon. And also because CIG is fucking the trends, and they are crowdfunding the game rather than going the usual route of every other studio, getting funding for it mm -hmm. through some means, either by so they're releasing. They're not. They're not. They're not controllable. They can't yeah. make them do a certain thing a certain way because they're they're they they they're not they're not beholden to anybody. They only have a few small investors. That have actually given the money for very specific things like the uh, counters i think they call them or something for the advertising money for squadron 42. Mm -hmm. and that's the other thing they everybody always forgets is they're not making one game they're making two two yeah a lot of people conveniently forget that oh they they conveniently forget a lot of things when criticizing squadron 42. they and they can and they conveniently well, not conveniently, but they selectively ignore certain truths. Yeah. It's like, you you can't convince these people. I mean, they, they've got this stuck in their head. It's a scam. It's a scam. They got the, they've got it just stuck in their head, and you can't reason with them. So, I look at it this way. Here's my thing on it. I've been through this before with No Man's Sky. Um, I had a long argument with somebody, I think it was in one of the Steam forums once, and I said, no, there's more to it, there's going to be more to it, and he's like, no, there's no blah, blah, there's no evidence, there's no proof, and I said, what are you talking about? All these guys who are doing data mining are finding all kinds of information about things that are going to be coming, even in the game files itself, there's more mm -hmm. coming. And, oh, I heard nothing from him when, um... Uh, next came out mm -hmm. the no man's sky next came out yeah he disappeared gee i wonder why and i think just recently they even released another update to uh, no man's sky 
they put out um you don't need new new updates are there that's awkward. is there a new new update hold on yeah let me just check that real quick i don't know of any new new updates but it was uh yeah. relatively recently a lot that that the sentinels um, patch they are the sentinels patch yeah that uh, yeah that 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 was a combat update that they um that they and put out they have that new expedition going on i don't know if that's still ongoing i or mean, don't know ended. if that's expired yet or not yeah but um but so that's the thing is and they're still adding content yeah. and they haven't charged anybody dave is that is that patch is that um um expedition going still or did that expire about another two weeks to go Another two weeks to go? Wow. Approximately? Approximately two weeks. Okay. So approximately two weeks to go. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a combat update. You know, yeah. and it's pretty, been pretty well received. And so, these, are, these are handcrafted events that they set up. Mm -hmm. Unlike um, community events, which are just Well, I mean, they have to configure them and set them up and everything, but... Yeah. It, um, but the point is, is that, is that everybody mocked Hello Games, everybody mocked Sean Murray, everyone they sent death threats, they did all this jazz. Yeah. I mean, look how bad it got. I mean, it mm -hmm. got bad. It got it, really bad. It got for them. really bad. And what what could they do? Mm -hmm. I mean, what 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 was their options? I mean, what could they do? Everyone's beating on them and beating on them and beating on them. All, all they could do was just do what they're doing, and they didn't give up. Yeah. And now look at it today. I mean, it's a full-fledged game that, I mean, puts a lot of other games to shame. And now I it's going to be on the Switch. It. Now it's going to be on the Switch. Th you're moving to the Switch. Yeah. And it's like it's on every freaking console out there now. And every update, every every everything new, has been free. In, new uh, stuff that's in the game is also in VR. Also in VR and every DLC, they did not monetize a single penny of this game. Yeah. So for all that criticism people gave them, and they're the ones who who are doing everything, they did everything. I mean, they 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 cleaned it up. Yeah. I mean, they they never monetized. Everyone's like, you look at EA and they monetize all these. They monetize. They didn't monetize a single thing. I still. They think... didn't charge a single DLC. DLC. All they I, did was I, put it on a new platform. I still think Sony is behind why the game was launched too early, in order to capitalize off of the hype. I think it was. I Sony made a killing in that. Sony made a killing in that, and I and think they it left. Was they them. left. They left them out to dry. Yeah. And um, I don't know how they strong earned them into it. Or if they didn't even have to do much, they probably just threatened them with a lawsuit or something, and they just capitulated. They, they had that way. flood in their offices. I think Sony helped them out with some money to keep them afloat after that disaster with their offices. And, um, you know that was why. bad. That that was that was worded funny. They had that flood, so Sony gave them money to keep them afloat. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> But uh, yeah, they they lost their they lost a lot of equipment because of that flood in their in their offices, and Sony gave them some money to help them out. And so, I've never heard were, anything that confirms that, but I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, really. I've never heard anything that confirms it, though. Yeah, I mean, but Sony they they did get, I think, pushed out the door by Sony at too early, and to Sony built up the hype. I think Sony figured, oh, it's going to... Sony saw it. They said it's going to fail, but they saw how people were um, clamoring around it, and they wanted to cash in. Yeah. Sony wanted to cash in on it because they realized that, hey, everyone's loving this. We get everyone to buy it. We don't care what happens after that. Let let Hello Games take the fall I mean, for it's it. It's not the first time they've done something shady. It's well, this was pretty bad. I mean, they the nearly... They almost wiped them I mean, out. They've... They've done some pretty shady stuff with the next. Um, but look Gran what Turismo. they did. With, look what they did with what the mistakes they had, though. They yeah. they got to work, they got to work, and they fixed it and they made it because they were because here's the thing: they were passionate for their game. Yeah, they really wanted their game to work. Yeah. Why do I say that? Because I look at Star Citizen, 
You and see the same passion. I see the same passion for Star Citizen. They really want it to work. Yeah. You know, they make mistakes. They're human like everybody else. Sometimes you look at it and go, why did you do this? But at the same time, they're passionate for the game. They want it to succeed. Mm -hmm. They really do. And this is how I know they're going to succeed. Because you can see it when, they, when they're on stream, when, when the devs are talking. You can tell they want this too. It's, it's the one game, it's like this, that uber space detailed sci-fi world, highly detailed world that, you know, we've always, would have always imagined wanting to play, but most game companies will, will try to do something and they'll, they'll, they, they won't go that detail. They'll, they'll, yeah. they'll skip out somewhere. Especially Starfield is not going to be anything like it. No. You know, it's going to be Skyrim in space. You know, it, it's not really going to be that sort of open world, open ended sort of thing. And I'm not saying it'll be a bad game. I'm yeah. just saying it'll only be good for what it is. It's not going to be the replacement for Elite Dangerous that Obsidian no. Ant thinks it might be. No, no. And um, it won't. No. And um, I think when you look at Frontier, you don't see that sort of passion. It's almost like they're going out of their way to try to suppress information. They're trying to go away. You feel you feel like they're hiding, hiding something. And you yeah. get this sense of they're not tell, being fully honest with you. No. And in no. a, a, a disingenuous kind of you know, mm -hmm. in, a, in this kind of disingenuous element to it. And they're like, it's like it feels minimum effort. And you know, I'm pretty sure there's guys that work there that just wanted the thing, but they, it just doesn't feel that way. It's like. The head of the company, David Braden, he doesn't come out and talk about it. He'll release a statement or something. Yeah. But where is he in, in all the Odyssey mess? He came out a little bit, but it was mostly damage control. It's like just trying to... And the whole thing they did where they were like, well, don't worry, it's not that bad a version. We got this whole other build. It's going to be fine. And then it came out not fine. Yeah. And it we're still in that state. So it's that passion from the devs towards Star Citizen that tell me it's going to be like No Man's Sky. It's going to take them a while to get there, but they want it to succeed. Yeah. And it's going to, because they've got the passion, desire. And, you know, the other controversy that's been kicked up lately is Eve, CCP has started selling ships and was like well why do they get to sell ships and it work you know and it's causing all this horrible controversy and star citizen does it and it's fine because they're completely different games yeah you know it's I mean, like Eve's it's because a finished game that's been out for years and star citizen is a game that's currently well, it, in development it, it's more than that. Only it's, revenue it's, more than it's, it's more than just that it's the a lot of the gameplay that goes into that ship. It's a player-run economy over there. Yeah, completely player-run. Absolutely so, completely player-run. So the the big difference, to, to really answer Obsidian Ant, the big difference to why it's not okay in, 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 in EVE and doesn't matter in Star Citizen is because the effort to build what they were selling takes away from that economy. It's like counterfeit over there. It's like counterfeit currency. Yeah. When CCP goes and sells a ship or sells something into that player run economy, it's like counterfeiting. It wasn't, nobody had anything, any part in the construction of that ship. Mm -hmm. The downstream resources of purchasing materials, you know, people who would have sold a person. Like take for example, somebody built the ship versus CCP selling it. That person that built that ship had to spend the time in the game to learn how to play it, to gather the resources and put it together, and mm -hmm. all that connected to everybody around it, that whole ecosystem. They shortchanged and short circuit all of that yeah. just by dropping it in there. It's like counterfeit money. Because some of those gigantic ships take months to build. Some of the right. really big it, it ones. Takes, I've heard it takes it stupid long over there to build it. Yeah. So that's why it hurts that game, where when it comes to Star Citizen, the game doesn't have that sort of mechanic and won't have that kind of mechanic where, mm -hmm. you know, it's like if a game, if, if a ship appears because a player buys it in game or it's 
purchased on the store, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Because there's there's no economy that supports the construction of that ship. Yeah. So when I'm flying around and, and I encounter somebody who's got a purchased ship on the store or purchased it from their own currency, and I blow it out of the sky, it didn't matter. Yep. It didn't matter one way or the other. It didn't have an effect on the, where that ship came from. And the fact it's blown into a dozen bits doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter to me and it didn't matter to them. Because if they bought it in game, they just go back and, you know, do their insurance claim and it's back. And the most it might do is nudge, it might nudge um, some of the background simulation, you know, the new quanta we're talking about when yeah. that's in there and it's done properly, mm -hmm. but it would have done that anyway. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing is it doesn't negatively affect the economy because um, when they have to, you know, order the ship again back with insurance and the system generates another ship for them, Mm -hmm. Whether it came from a player bought ship or a um, or a store purchase ship, the effect on that simulation is identical, yeah. whereas, based on how they've described yeah. it. Whereas in no Eve, impact. if you just if one of those mega ships that they that they're in the game are destroyed, that's uh, that's all that that's gone. Six months to a year of work gone. 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 And so what that does is it generates all kinds of new work and new activity to make an attempt to replace it. Yeah. That doesn't exist in Star Citizen, and, and as far as what we know, won't. That drives that game's economy. So, Whereas the destruction of a ship in Star Citizen will, of course, drive the economy as well. It will drive the economy, but, but not, it will be the same effect either way. Same effect either way. It's what drives it ultimately is a little bit different it's it is player influence but not completely player driven yeah the only thing that players really do is have an influence on it yeah and it, it's 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 not there really to be a player run economy it's there to make the world feel alive and dynamic yes so that you never really know what's going to happen next what they're trying to do is they're trying to make it so that it's an procedurally randomly generated. Yeah. In other words, it is, it's not RNG because that would have no order to it. There would be no logic to why something would happen totally RNG. That's silly, dangerous. That's how they do it. <laughs> so, a little bit. A little more to it, but yeah. you, you don't really have as big of an effect. Yeah. But... I mean, you can you can change the state of an environment if you're doing something, and players can the way they've described it, we'll be able to do that too. But at the same time, it does have the order of things that, if a lot of activity is happening in a certain area, it can influence that and change dynamically what's happening and makes that hey, if all this activity is happening over here because somebody discovered a um, new mining site, and so yeah. now you have all this new activity. By the there's way, I'm an, going there's a to, rhyme and reason yeah. to it. By the way, I am going to link in the video description a link to Tony Z's presentation from Citizen Con in 20... What is it? 2020? Was it the um, 2020 or 2019? Do I think the it was one, the, the, do the Do the video that he presented that was just him sitting down doing the talk. Okay. That's a really good detailed video. Yeah, that's a... It's, I mean, then what, it's, what it's this relatively is, thing's going to do too. is absolutely mind-blowing. No yeah. other game has this. And you're going to, you're going to, it's going to affect everything down to you having, they didn't really feel like it was going to have, maybe you have a sort of, what they call those games where you have a kind of an NPC that's kind of picking on you sort of a thing. What's they call that? Um, I think Lord of Rings Online had it. We're going to Nemesis Nem system. Oh, Nemesis system? And not, it's not a Nemesis system. Yeah. But it, it's almost, the way he talked about it made mm -hmm. it almost feel like it could be. Yeah. Like, he's not coming directly after you. You're just an encounter on his day-to-day -day job. Yeah. But, you know, he's going to have a life, and if you can track him down, you know, you can go wreck his day. You know, that 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 NPC that, you know, got you at one point. And I think what, what's going to really change, and I think what's going to change a lot of things, is when we start getting ship armor and ship ability to disable vessels without completely blowing them up yeah and the cargo refactor and all that stuff comes in 
and you're gonna have to really go over and grab that cargo and yank it over and load it up. You know, for piracy, that kind of piracy is gonna be more of a thing. We'll have to see how it all really plays out in the end, but I mean, that's gonna be, you know, very interesting. Yeah, but for listeners um, just listening and then wondering track. what the heck Quantum is, what are we talking about? Okay. It's a background simulation system that ties into the NPC AI system and what it does is it handles npc behavior behind the scenes um think of most... it this way it is a very complex like you'll have games that have npcs that have lives yeah like skyrim the npcs, skyrim. The NPCs like skyrim had NPCs lives they had a routine lives. they went through this is that on a stupidly more complex level yeah this is where um trading and interacting and it's not just tracking a handful of npcs the NPCs become virtualized. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, does does a tree make a sound when it falls in the wood? In Star Citizen, no, because it's virtual. They are virtual NPCs that represent activity. Yeah. And when you go there, that's when they become rendered into representative of what that activity was. Yeah. So if in an area there's a lot of pirates, if you're not there, the game internally is going, there's pirate activity and there's all this activity going on over here. You go there and you'll see some representation of that pirate activity. You'll encounter a police vehicle attacking pirates who are attacking a cargo ship. Yeah. You'll see the result of that background simulation. You can go help the pirates. You can mm -hmm. go steal the cargo while they're fighting. You can go help the police. You can choose how you want to interact with that. And then that will affect your reputation in what choice you made at that moment, mm -hmm. whether you ignored it or whether you helped the pirate or the NPC or went and stole the cargo or whatever, um, it will affect the, how the game, the rest of the game treats you. And that reputation builds up with either the police or the pirates or, or all other organizations that are affected by it. Yeah, and let's say you and me, let's say we're flying, we go to Lyra, and let's say we find some deposits of, uh, some, of what is that, Lyranite? of um that really really lucrative or yeah that's let's, say we, one let's say we find some of that and mm -hmm. we we leave we uh, get that processed and stuff and maybe we sell the data for for the location we, for that we found that stuff then that will spark sort of a gold rush of npcs that will start mining that area for laranite and then that will increase pirate activity in that area. Mm -hmm. And then that will increase, you know, police activity police action. there, police actions. And then the what you just described, that minimum part right there, mm -hmm. at least with the police, the pirates and the cargo. Yep. That part, maybe not the mining part, but the rest mm -hmm. of that, that piece is coming in 317. That actually is coming. And they said it's like select locations mm -hmm. where it's going to be running at. That police pirate cargo loop will be functional in certain select areas as an initial test. And the results of that activity, like pirates getting shot down, they're going to go refuel, the police going back after a successful or unsuccessful, and whatever, that's going to affect gas prices and repair prices. Yes. And so the effect on the economy is going to be linked to that activity. So if there's all kinds of pirate activity in an area, the prices of gas and, and repairs might go up. Mm -hmm. And so that system, that basic beginning part of that, is what's coming in 3.17. They've, they've basically said it's coming. So unless they change their mind on it, it's going to be there. Yeah. Um, so we've got that, the, the quantum coming. And also, we're getting a dedicated button for the ATC. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I, that is so sweet. Because I you... have, I, whenever I'm flying, I have to slow down half speed so I don't run into something because I have to bring up the Moby glass and go into the app and do all the other. And it's like, I always have to slow down because if it takes longer because of it lagging out, I could run into something. To be able to just sit there while I'm flying and just thumb over and hit a control button and get the nearest ATC and be able to move right into the landing site without having to be looking away. Oh, yes. That that <laughs> right there. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Before Absolutely. you had to bring up your Moby Glass or you had to uh, 
where you had to go into um, personal inner thought and yeah, and it was look down it, on your ship's console and find which of your um, I which on your screens had your uh, comms on it. Or if you yeah, if you did it by on on, on comm yeah. screens. I mean, I mean this is, when that, this when is that worked, the game changed. They still haven't implemented the kiosks for um, repair, rearm, and refuel. Still haven't no. done that, but they have. That shouldn't be far for them. It shouldn't be because they're going to need a. They're going to need a version of that for the for the yeah. ships and ship and ship spawning anyway. Yeah. So they they need to they need to sort that out. Oh. They did show us um, some. They were working on the. Um, um building blocks for the um asop terminals yes uh, also i saw the building blocks for the stores oh that that's, looks that's nice. another thing we're getting up to is mm -hmm. now you're going to be able to sell stuff in stores yes yes so sell, sell stuff that so you loot. What, what that means is before they added this new inventory system and they added looting mm -hmm. but none of that does you any good if you went out and loot and you get all the stuff and you don't need any of it, just chunk it out the back of your ship because there's nothing you can do with it. Yeah. Like, why did I collect all this crap? I'm just going to chunk it out. So now what happens is you can go find stuff laying around the universe, laying around the universe, and go sell it. So you can make money, and the prices will be, it will depend on the shop, anywhere from 50 to 90% of what it sells for. Plus, they well, this is what gets me. They're taking existing things out of shops so it's going to be interesting to see what gets removed yeah and where it goes specifically a lot of the um a lot of the security uh armor a lot of the um armor that the security forces use that was in the shops a lot of that's going to be what's taken out and will be in those um loot boxes not loot boxes, but in those loot loot. They also, I think can... they said that it's also going to be where it shows up. Yes. It's going to matter too. So it, it's they're they're making it more location based. So if you're in a pirate den, you're more apt to find pirate loot. If you're in a security area, you're more to find security uniforms. Yeah. So they're making it very. I think they said they're updating. I'm. I'm I think this is what they said. They are going to have this. Is that they are going to have it so that where you are matters too and their labels are color coded based on rarity just like every other mmo did they say like, did they confirm they were adding that yeah like purple for like uh, really really rare stuff and i, I didn't i didn't i yellow, wasn't sure if they were doing that or not blue, things like that yeah jared was talking about that in inside star citizen when okay when we did the uh reaction Video to inside stars. Okay, I didn't. I didn't quite catch exactly. I knew he was talking about rarity and color, but I didn't. I didn't catch it was yeah. confirmed for it. So they're 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 doing all that. They've got ship to ship refueling. Uh, yeah. that's supposed to be in three seventeen. Yep. Um, the cargo refactor. We're not getting that yet, but we are getting. That's, that I wouldn't say that's three eighteen. I would say wait until they really say it's coming because yeah, we wait, don't really know yeah. when it's coming. But we're getting finally. A ship that's been in concept for a long ass time finally coming that's the whole a all a is coming and at some point they're going to get the whole c too but not this patch yeah that one's been a stupid long time coming they need to the cargo refactor for that to work the whole a is going to be the only one of that series that can actually land on it that can actually land, land while its cargo is while open yeah it's got cargo the other one that's going to affect you and me because we want one is the Scorpius is coming too. Yes, and uh, that's going to be cool. That's going to be cool. I'm looking I mean, forward to that ship. An we have an we have an Odyssey on order, and yeah, we have an Odyssey on order, and I'm really hoping this thing fit. Yeah, because <laughs> that'll be a nice ship to be able to launch out of the back of that Odyssey. You know, if we're going long haul with the Odyssey into Pyro, and we have some kind of combat situation um get dave to kind of keep an eye on the hull on on mm -hmm. the main on the odyssey while we you know take the scorpius out and go deal with whatever we're dealing with mm -hmm. and they are that'll be fun they are serious they are very serious on trying to get pyro out this year because they moved ship to ship refueling up mm -hmm. in order to release it in order to release it now 
because it's necessary for pyro because the pyro system's bigger than stanton it's, it's bigger than stanton and there's less gas stops yep so you're going to have a longer way to go without there, these carrier ships they've been adding like the odyssey and what's that the liberator. Carrier one? the liberator the liberator they're, the reason they're the reason they're pushing these is because and they're they're um getting trying to get these out the door is be, well they're wanting to get these out the door when they're working on them is because they're going to need them because you're not yeah. going to be able to get those small fighter craft those, into those deep yeah. areas into pyro without those, having to refuel unless you have a ship like the carrick which will have a fuel scoop on it which has well which has a fuel scoop and the odyssey which has a fuel scoop and also the ability to mine and get its own quantum fuel mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to get very far in the pyro system you're going to need some sort of support if you're going yep. to be a flying a fighter there. Yep. And that's going to see that's going to be the thing is that's also really pushing that multi -play, that multi, you know, team aspect gameplay. Mm -hmm. Right now in the verse if you're just, you know, a single dude by yourself running around the verse, you can go anywhere and shoot at any location and you know, go and hunt down whatever you want. You can go mine anywhere you want. You can go bounty hunt anywhere you want. In any size ship, nearly. Oh yeah, I can I can hop from Microtech to Lo to um, Hurston to uh, Arc Corp in a Pisces. Yeah. Now some gonna... of the ships some of the ships don't have as great a fuel economy, or mm -hmm. if you have them upgraded to like a higher class, they're less fuel efficient, so you can run out. But it's not hard to deal with. Yeah. But when you get out the pyro, that ain't gonna work. Mm -mm. You're not just gonna be able to go mine anywhere and go fly anywhere. You're gonna need a support craft. Yep um either somebody to come along and refuel you you're gonna it's gonna have to be multiplayer level stuff so those and even if you bought it gonna be necessary for pyro and they also really are those transport ships like the odyssey and the liberator are going to be absolutely necessary mm -hmm. especially if you want to get the nix because if they release nix which should be finished because it's not as complex a system. It, it should not take Nyx long. Here's what I think when it comes to planet. And, I, and, and, and my thing on this is that um, two things. A, there's no, the Nyx will probably come in very shorter. I would not be surprised if Nyx even released with it. If it doesn't release with it, it'll probably be the patch behind it. Yeah. I think Nyx will come in really fast because they've, they've been showing Nyx from time to time. Yeah. They have been working on the Levski landing zone. They've been adding like the hospital, and mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're not. They didn't abandon it. They're still working on it. Yeah. So I think what's going to happen is the the system itself is much simpler. So I think it's it's going to be very short order that they're going to they're going to add it to the game. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do think that when it comes to adding star systems, and I've told this to you before, they really need to pick up the pace. Yes. Once that once that boundary has been crossed, of uh, we can go to other star systems. Mm -hmm. Other star systems can be added, and that server meshing is done enough that they could start supporting that. They got to start adding them, and I mean stupidly fast. What's slowing them down is Squadron Forty Two. Squadron Forty Two is hampering performance, and the Montreal team. It'll be interesting to see how much they can produce. Yeah. When, when, because they're there, the, the whole point of that Montreal team is, is to build to star systems. Star system. And those guys are going to be under the gun to get that stuff done. Yeah. Because when that thing comes, when they, when we cross that boundary of getting other star systems, they want a hundred, they, the, 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 the pitched promised release count of planets is a hundred. And we probably only really got about three or four systems. You got, Stanton, you got Pyro, you got Nyx. Mm -hmm. They're working on a few for Squadron 42, which would probably be easily translatable. We don't know how many they have in there, but I'd assume two or three or four. This is the whole point why they spent oh, and years and building these procedural tools for the right. artists to build the planets. To build up planets uh, because they used... They did say that it took them how many months to rebuild Stanton in the new tech? About a month. It took them about so, a month to re yeah. rebuild Stanton. Now, that was just a planet that doesn't count landing zones. A year? Zones. Yeah. So, that's the thing is, in it, not sure when they're going to, you know, what their release target is for Star Citizen. Of course, they don't know either. Yeah. But in order to have the 100 systems, they're going to have to be at 
breakneck speed. Yeah. To get 100 systems, because even if you did 25 systems a year, it's still talking four years down the road. You know, they they are going to have to do crazy amounts of construction on these. Yeah. I I I said I've said this. They should release the planets, even if the landing zones aren't ready. Mm -hmm. They should if what you know if they're going to have a spot where you can get gas, just do a placeholder space station and drop it in at a relatively key location, and just sort of mimic where you would normally be able to find gas stops and rest stops and stuff. Yeah. And just do that and just release systems after systems after systems after systems even if they're not finished yeah get them in there and then the artist can swing back around and start adding content you know as needed because mm -hmm. i mean obviously not every system is going to have stuff in it but some systems are going to be really complicated like stanton they need to come back through after they've added all these and start adding it because that that's how they did. I mean, we got Microtech the planet before we were even able to go into the city. Yeah. And I think I think that's probably what they should do is just add add the planets, add the world, get them in there, and come back through and iterate over. Mm -hmm. Flesh them out. Yeah. I tell you what, I'd love to see down the road when it's done. Mm -hmm. It's for them to bring people in, either studios or individuals or groups, and with guidance, I said that what they should do is they should have this thing where new people who are trying to get into the industry who need an industry level experience to get into other companies and other things they want to do or even continue to work at cig give them portions of microtech or uh art corp to, to flesh out areas of the city and expand the city interns interns and let them do content in those areas and let them build it out so that way they can get experience. It helps the game expand in detail in various areas, but it also gives them experience in working in that so they can have some, you know, some of that experience under their belt. Yeah. So when they go get the job they really want, they've got that, they got the, they put the time in at an, at, and working for an actual company level and it helps the game and it helps yeah. their careers. One of the other reasons, because we talked about this earlier, one of the other reasons why, uh, CD Projekt Red is switching to Unreal is because if they bring in a new person and you know this precisely because of you worked in programming it takes a certain amount of time for a new mm -hmm. hire to get up to speed with mm -hmm. the tech and with procedures mm -hmm. now it, you said uh, what 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 it took like what it uh, took five, five years five years for someone five years to become competent at the work it took me about five years. Oh. The two trainees I had at the time, it took them about five years to become competent at it. It, it you, you really have to hold the hand until they're ready to go and hit the ground running. They, they, well, that was very particular because it was very specialized work. That was very specialized work, but they, every company has their, has their specific own procedures. procedures and this is true. Yeah. And they have their own, their own tech, like CIG has a lot of their own But to give them that experience, to get them, to get them yeah. on board, you know, and, and be able to get them up to speed and, mm -hmm. and be able to create content. Because here's an example, their coffee shop vendor. Mm -hmm. Everybody mocked that, mm -hmm. but that was the work of of basically a new employee. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an example of, you know, someone's like, well, it's just a coffee shop vendor, that ain't nothing. But what it was is an example of what I'm talking about, where something new was added because there was new hand on deck that could come in and finish some of that work mm -hmm. and learn the ropes and further their career while they at while they enhance the game sometimes it'll be big things and sometimes there'll be little stuff yeah little i mean and I, I think that's a great way to go about it and and you know in the grand scheme of things a coffee shop vendor is not a big thing no you know it's not something you would put on a bullet point you know like really dangerous put little tiny things as, as main bullet points for their bullet updates and bullet points but every little thing helps immersion Mm -hmm. Because this is supposed to be a simulation of a of a, a living, breathing universe. Yeah. You know. And I've always I've always said that in the end they should license this technology. I, imagine how much money they would get. Oh God, the portfolio income. of patents and tech that CIG has. Mm -hmm. God, they could make 
millions. Yeah. This if, licensing this I out. I mean, think about this. With the detail and fidelity of Star Citizen, that they licensed the technology to say EA. Mm -hmm. And then EA turns God around. Forbid. Well... <laughs> But, but EA turns I, around. I get, I get, I get what you're. I in get what in you're an idea at. perfect universe, I know, I know. In an idea perfect universe, but EA turns around with the technology and produces a Star Wars Galaxy Two, yeah. Where they took it and took all the Star Citizen stuff out, but they kept the tech. You know, they're keeping the technology. They're making their own game. They're making the Star Wars game using that technology. So they replace all the sound effects with Star Wars sound effects. Mm -hmm. You know, they take out the Scorpius and put a real X wing in. You know. You take out Daymar and you have real Tatooine. The, the whole planet too. You'd, instead of the Carrick, you'd have a um, um, Millennium Falcon. Well, that would be like your um, what's that other ship? The what's that other ship with the hi hidey hole? Um, it's white. Um, the not a Star Destroyer. Crusader, Crusader, um, Star, uh, Star, um, Star Runner. Yeah, Star Runner. Is it Star Runner? This, um, Mercury this, Star Runner. Oh, Mercury, Mercury Star, Star Runner. Runner. Yeah. Instead Mercury of the, Star Runner. Instead of the um, um, they get out and put an actual Millennium Falcon in. You know, where you got the whole ramp and you can get you can run down to the bridge and you know, you have the somebody back there more as like, a chewy character. Like, yeah, smacking on the thing, huh? <laughs> What's that? The Carrick would be more like a Tantive four. That would um, be a Tantive four. Yeah, exactly. That you Corvette. could actually operate a, a Tantive four. Corvette. <laughs> that the Corellian Corvette, yeah. That you you have the whole ship, you know, yeah. all the way up, all the way up to a Star Destroyer. The whole thing is there. Mm -hmm. You got an org, you know, you're running, you're working for the Empire, or whatever. You run, run, you know, run, run a complete ship. Yeah, would never do it, but if they ever did, they would have people just flocking to them, flocking oh, to that game. God. The That's... the amount of money that would be in it if it was done correctly for both EA and CIG would be staggering. Yeah. If they if they both were able to do it, CIG get their tech finished and then be able to license it to EA and EA give it the love it deserves, give it the detail it deserves mm -hmm. and get it in there and do it right. The if if they could both if if, if they could ever do it if you could if you could line the stars up just right yeah and make this happen the amount of money that would be in it for cig and ea and have us have that sort of fidelity that a, star citizen is offering but in a star wars setting a game with the fidelity of star citizen but set in the star wars universe my god my it would be, god it's mind-blowing it's a dream because I mean, Star Citizen is, is its own interpretation of trying to reproduce that sort of world. Because I mean, that's what Star Wars Galaxies was kind of providing was all that sort of being able to be in a ship and walk around and fly around and mm -hmm. do all that stuff. And they're providing that in a modern game. It's just, you know, it's, you know, Star Citizen, as good as it is, as the technology is, it's still discount Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it still is. It is. It's still discount Star Wars. Yes, yes. So, um, so but to have the authentic thing with that fidelity would be mind blowing. It's it's, it's still just, more heavily influenced by Wing Commander and and Freelancer. You know, you had that guy. What's his name? Uh, Mark Hamill, who was sort of doing. As I said, it's discount yeah. Star. It's discount Star Wars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, or if EA, you know, the other thing is, or if EA or Disney licensed the CIG the rights to make it, and skip EA altogether, or just have Disney license them to do it. They're straight to the source. I mean, they know their own tools. They'd have to get done with Star Citizen first, and, and then oh, uh, yeah. well, Squadron this is, this 42. Is, this is post everything else. Yeah. There's no way you'd get it anytime soon. You, that, <laughs> that, 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 that. Two decades in the distance. That's two decades, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can understand people's frustrations that it does it is taking a long time. I, I get yeah. it. It's just, you know, even I question. I don't question that they that they want to do it. I don't question that they can do it. You know, but I'm like everyone else. How long is it going to take? 
Yeah. And CIG's answer to that is we don't talk about that around here. <laughs> yes. It's done when it's done. It's done when it's done. Yes. So, and that'll never really truly be done because even after release, assuming they get everything right and that nothing goes wrong and they get everything done and we have all the stuff they promised, you're still not finished because they, they'll always be adding to it. Oh, yeah. I mean, be, so, like, be like Eve. They're never done adding stuff. Yeah, and so, I mean, it, to me, being able to play it now instead of... See, because if... if, if even if they didn't have it available to us to play, we would be waiting how long for it to ever come out. Even if, if they if they were to somehow fund it some other way. And we would never be able to play it for years and years until it came out. Mm -hmm. At least now we get to, you know, toy around with it and are playing it now and having that feedback while it's in development mm -hmm. makes the game better because they can say, oh, this thing didn't work so well, let's take this out. Yeah. You know, they've taken things out of the game because they didn't work right. They took mm -hmm. hover mode out because it didn't work well. They took that light tunnel thing out because it was a pain in the butt. Yeah. You know, and they're still trying to really figure out how to do that right. And they, they'll eventually come down to something, but they... um. The light tunnel thing was when they had those um, boxes that you fly through in order to get I down. didn't mind the boxes. Just take away the stupid autopilot. I didn't mind the boxes. It helped yeah, me find the game was an, that's annoying. It's still annoying, but it's not it's as annoying as it used to be. It's still annoying, and they need to get rid of it. It's like, if I'm going to crash on the side of the building, I'm going to crash on the side of the building. They should just you know, get just, rid of the no-fly zones altogether and just have some other system. Like, you know, you... Well, I fly think what they're trying to supposed to fly, get a fine, you know. I think what they're trying to avoid is pad rammers and you know, yeah, uh, that's door campers what they want to stuff. get rid of. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think that's a really good way to do it because you're you're creating as much problems. Because here's the thing: what they could do is if you're if you do a pad ramming in an, in a, in a, in a in a in a in a in a you know controlled zone i mean what's what's it in air traffic control in in aeronautics mm. there's zones for mm. where you can go and what you can do there's different types of zones of where you're supposed to be and when you're supposed to be there controlled airspace yeah there's controlled there there are controlled air spaces and in these controlled spare air spaces if you're not authorized to be in these airspace within a certain distance of the station and you you violate that a the station can give you warning then they can open fire also b that could someone's like well they could just respawn their ship no because the insurance company is not covering um a criminal activity with that ship they're like no you we're not gonna we're not gonna bring this ship back out you're gonna have to wait x amount of time you can't just come fly right back out mm -hmm. so what might only be a 30 second recovery if a ship gets blown up now is no, you gotta wait an hour. You're not coming back. Yeah, and and right now you can just die and come back, die and come back, die and come yeah. back as much as you want. Later, you won't be able to do that. They Friends. they need to have it so that yeah, when you when when that or that or the cost of the recovery of that ship, yeah, you know, doubles or triples the, or quadruples or last, something. Yeah, the last Inside Star Citizen, Jared was talking about that where, um, just like in the game Sifu. You know, there's a game called Sifu. They call it um, Martial Arts Dark Souls. Every time okay. you die, a certain number of years go by and you come back. And you're older. Whereas in, in this game, you're not going to be older, but you're going to be... After you've died Owned. a couple of times, you're not going to be in the best of shape. You're going to yeah. have to have, like, cybernetic components. You're not going to have your whole body. And... um yeah, they, I things. think I think the and jury's still out on will. how they're going to do that, but they're still working. Yeah, and then eventually there will be permadeath, and then you have to uh, that will be a roll thing. A they, were, they have confirmed basically. that that will be a thing that you actually will lose your character, and you can have to inherit the things, and you lose the reputation because the new you doesn't have the rep the old you had. And see, yep. I don't think people are appreciating what that rep's going to mean. If you permadeath, which mm -hmm. is what they're going to have, you're going to have X number of lives. You know, old arcade sort of thing. You're going to have X number of lives, X number of recalls. Yep. And then after that, you're going to be permanently dead. Your your DNA is corrupted. You're dead. Yep. And what that's going to do is that's going to put a massive dent 
in your um because the new you the young you the you know inheritor of your dad uncle cousins nephews brothers whoever who blew himself up um is not going to have the reputation that they did nephew the like, brother is uncle's former roommate yeah yeah they're, they're not gonna you're not gonna have the reputation it should be a big smack on that reputation yeah and i think it's going to be where that reputation you might have had access to all these high these good quality missions that mm -hmm. can make you millions and suddenly one extra death and it's all gone you gotta you gotta work your way back yeah. up in those organizations to get that reputation back i mean you're really gonna have to think before you take some serious risks yeah and it's like one or two mistakes and you learn and it's like don't do that again you're more careful yeah. and you know playing you as going, a pirate but... especially yeah. if you're playing as a pirate you're just gonna have to accept you, that were, were uh... you, you like for example there's a good example so like you like hanging out at a certain at a certain place yeah let's just use grim hex as an example yeah. but grim hex doesn't let anybody except their faction land there and, and that's how it is right now but i'm just saying Here's a, an example. Mm -hmm. So let's say that Grimhax is being held by the Nine Tails, right? Yeah. And that they're not letting anybody land except for people they know they trust. Mm -hmm. And you had to work really hard to land there because you had to prove you were their buddy, their friend, their pal. Yeah. And you worked up for a week, say a week, a week's reasonable. You had to work about a week to gain that reputation. And after that, you can always land there. Now, you get stupid someday and you decide to go pad ram because, you know, you felt like it. Mm -hmm. You got permadeft on that because you did it one too many times. You were like, I'm just going to go back to Grimhack. Guess what? Now they're shooting you because you've lost all your rep. Yep. They don't know this you. And, and so now you got to go do all that work to get completely back Completely different had. character. At completely that different point. character. They don't know who you are. They don't trust you. You have to earn their respect because not earn their respect again. Because the, the the you that earned that respect is dead. So it's not re earn it back. This character doesn't have it. Never did. Yeah. You as a player had it, but that character never had it. So they have to earn that right again. Mm -hmm. And so that's a constant that can be a consequence. Now some people don't care, they don't mind, they just go back and do it again. But if all your friends are there, you and we have to sneak in until yeah. then or something. No, this is not going to be... The, all, all this is not going to be in 317. No, 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 no. This is, no. This, is, this, is, this is a good years down the no. road bit we're talking about In here. 317, what's going to happen is is bleeding is not going to be as bad a thing as it is now. Yeah. We've and really also... Just, we've really muddied the waters with um, what we've been talking about. Falling damage is going to be more random. Sometimes when you drop down, you won't take any damage. Sometimes you will. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 a it's a little different of how they're calculating whether or not you do take damage from falling. Like you you're in a tree and you jump out of the tree, you could just you land just fine, or you might break your you leg. Might not. Yeah, they're going to have a little RNG to it. Yeah. So that's that's what they're gonna do. Uh, what else is in there in three? Okay, so okay, so let me let me let me go through what is gonna be in there because we've been we've been we've been having fun all well, over been, the place. We've been talking we've been about muddy the, in the, the water. The big thing, which was quantum. Okay, yeah. So Scorpius the Hale we talked about. Yeah. Um, coffee shop vendor, mining gadgets. Mining gadgets are coming. Mm -hmm. So the miners that you mi stick on the outside of a uh, asteroid. asteroid and yeah. adjust it so that you can actually mine it with a with a rental. Mm -hmm. uh, Maria Pure of Heart Hospital. That's, that's um, coming. Maria Pure. That's that Lorville. is Lorville. Yes, that's Lorville. So that's going to be a new hospital. Looks, it looks interesting too. Hmm. Uh, let's see what else is coming. FPS weaponry factor. There's, they're doing this. Okay. So the weapons will have more. Um, they're, they're changing the look and feel of how the weapons work. Yes, say about it. Weapons of so they're 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 adjusting them. I think they were a little too aesthetically big pleasing, on screen. Right? And more they making them more aesthetic. No, it's how them... they move. It's oh, how, how they, they move. move. They they're, they're gonna. It's your character's gonna really feel like he's carrying something big and heavy. Ah. Um, recoil um, behaviors. The feel heavier and punchier. Oh God, the railgun. Yeah, it's gonna <laughs> knock you on knock you on your ass. Yes. Yeah, it's funny if you do it in space and you start floating backwards. 
Um, now this one is this one is a thing. Current excel current acceleration weapon turrets like on the ship. Mm -hmm. That's tricky because you really need turrets to move quickly. Yeah. And to have slow pickup speed is going to feel weird. That's going to that's going to be hard to balance. If that doesn't gonna... work out, they will likely remove it. I think yeah. they're adding it because of the Scorpius because the way the turret works on that yeah. ship because it the it it's a turret but it's also on rails because it moves to the back of the ship. We don't know how much front. control you're going to get over how that moves though. Yeah. We don't know how that's going to actually operate. If you're going to get an actual positional thing where you can really adjust and if it's going to punch a button that shows up on the bottom but we, they have not said how that i would think that as you turn it and as you move it towards the back it will politely slide towards the back once you're when you're pointing in that direction and then once you start turning in another direction it, it'll move it again it'll probably I mean, be automatic it, it potentially potentially it could give you the option of being able to fly over a, a crane and be able to shoot down without having to do anything special yeah so um now this one's big if they get this ship positional desync ah. this is big because that has been such a problem people going somewhere and it's like where are you I'm, well i'm here no you're not but i'm here no we you're run not into that yeah and it's like this getting this to work and, and there's been stories that it's been working pretty decently see air traffic control we talked about that Player injury policy patch, and you were you were briefly talking about this. Yeah. Um, so that um, when you get dan when you get injured, the injury in the injuries are um, 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 more. You're not going to just bleed out instantly. Yeah. Um, and there's there's where more um balances to that. Um, hunger and thirst states. Um, that they're ch they're changing the balance on that too. Plus persistence. The other thing it's about these two is persistence. Yeah. So if you're right now, if you're hungry, and you're at station, just log out, log in. You're not hungry anymore. You reset yep. your counter. Mm -hmm. In three seventeen, when you log out, log in, you were hungry. You're still hungry. Yep. You gotta got to go get you something to eat. Yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna be a thing. You're not going to immediately die when not for not having something to drink or eat. But. Yeah. You, when you log out and you log back in, that doesn't clear it. Yeah. It does now, it won't have It does now, but after this, it's not. Um, let's see. DNA head texture update. So that's going to be... Um, the, the faces and the heads are going to look better. Yeah. Um, I understand they ship... used faces of people from the dev team for that. I for, still um... say that every one of those guys looks like it's... Looks like... Um, Chris Roberts is an ancestor of all of them, I think. <laughs> They've all got that Chris Roberts face. Yes. Um, the British thing. Dealing, we talked about. Uh, shop and selling. Shopping and selling. That really is going to be... That, that, that is going to make... That's going to make a whole I, loop I for that like whole looting thing. I like the new interface for the stores. It, it's cleaner. It looks more responsive. When I saw the inside well, stores... building blocks now. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, and they ha they have a sell all button. So if you have multiple items, you want to get rid of them all of them instead of they? selling individually. There'll be a I sell had all a quick button. Sell button. Yeah, yeah a quick, a quick sell, sell button. Yeah, for sell for selling them all. And rivers, a yes. river. Well, one river, one river, one river, one river to. To rule them all. Well, this particular river is a demonstration of, or it's not so much a demo as it is, you know, trying to prove that yes, it is coming and the system is working and, you know, how it works, you know, the whole Rather thing. Rather than just and, the water being a water layer for the river, they want the water to actually flow and turn with the river and to have yeah. rapids, have the water affected by gravity. So it'll be white rapids going down so they could actually do waterfalls at some oh point. that would be epic. that would be yeah. cool is there anything else let's see and you can finally go into the water without dying yeah <laughs> is before quick? water was instant death so i think those are most of all the major the the biggies the biggies is is um that portion of quantum 
quantum the selling and we the and a ship that's been in in concept for like forever finally coming yeah and then the refueling and the refueling but the the Quantum and, and the item selling are two big things because those are quantum and item selling. That's those, those are, are important for yeah. an MMO. They 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 pour the groundwork. They pour the they, they pour the foundation yeah. for those systems, especially having Quanta start. Because here's the thing: this is just the beginning of Quanta. Yes. From every because how you know, how much does it depend on say server meshing to really operate and really produce the kind of results we want to see. You know how much is that going to affect it and when we get pyro is it gonna you know how much is quanta going to affect you know pirates coming over from you know my, from uh from pyro and what um you know how much activity is going to be going back over between that and mm -hmm. Stanton? As in elite dangerous how how it works now if you get attacked by a pirate that pirate's not persistent in the game because you've seen it where I'm flying and all of a sudden, poof, something just pops into existence, flies behind me, tries to um, pull me out of um, frame shift, draw, out of, out of uh, light speed, tries to pull me out, and then I break away and then it just swerves off and vanishes and it's not persistent in the game world. With the quantum, with quantum, that NPC is persistent. You can follow that NPC where he came from. Yeah, and that's and one of the things Tony Z described is you could track him back if that NPC is, let's say he's going back to wherever he came from. Let's say he's done for the day and he goes back to Port Olisar. He made this example. Yeah. And you can follow him and you have a chance, you have a chance of encountering him there at Port Olisar. Mm-hmm. You know, and you could, you know, like there's the NPC that attacked me and he still got his crime rating. So I'm going to, you know, deal with him. Yeah, you, you can, he, he attacked you and now, now you can go there and take it, get his bounty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have actually be able to do that. What, what was it he said? You're coming with me. You can come with me warm or you can come with me cold. Is that, is that how he said it? What was it? <laughs> how, how was it he said it? You can, um, you can, you can I can bring you in. I can bring in warm. I can bring in cold. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, Mandalorian thing. Oh, yeah. This, and that's, to me, I look at it. This and, is the like, way. People talk about griefing and stuff and ways of, ways of, when somebody is being a problem in the game, that's mm -hmm. the other thing I've said is they can put a player-based bounty on him and say, look, this, this, this guy's wanted. He's a criminal. And... You can put a bounty on them that everyone and whoever's bounty hunting can come take and come hunt them down. Mm -hmm. If somebody's repeatedly being a problem, put a bounty on them. Yeah, and you know players can come and track their butt down and deal with it. And since they have, I think I think the best way here's what here's yeah. what I've heard said, and I kind of agree with it. The best way to deal with player based, you know, with with griefing, it, because it's it's a form of PvP that's sort of out of control, is. To solve it with a PV, to solve it with a PVTP type situation, yeah, is to give other players incentive to put this player down, to, to come yeah. in and take him out, you know, to no, I'm not tear out. I mean, but I mean, take out, you know, this coming, take care of this guy, mm -hmm. you know. So he's want he's wanting PVP, and he's just trying to pick on somebody low level and weak, you know, somebody who, you know, especially like where where it happens. Have the penalties different for like if it's like a beginner like area say stanton the people are starting out around almost are or, you know on the major landing zones yeah the bounty be higher i mean you're gonna if you pad ram in lorville the bounty might be stupid high and people are gonna come hunt you down mm -hmm. whereas um you gotta you're not so high that it's gonna be abused because it's like oh i'm gonna get i got a way to make money here let's go ram somebody and then you go and collect the bounty and you got to make sure that that doesn't. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know how they would check for that. I have no idea how they would do that. How they would they would handle that? But, but uh, you know, there's the. But you, you collect the bounty and the guy's in jail. He's not getting out for a while. You might have collected, but that's it. You're done. If he pad rams somebody and blows up his ship, he dies, and they have the full player death 
you know, death of a spaceman system in the game, he has a chance of losing everything he's got. Well, see, here's the thing. This is assuming he has much to begin with. True. It's somebody who's entered the game. See, here's here's your biggest here's your biggest problem, guy. Somebody who has started the game doesn't like the game, but they're playing it for just to make everybody else miserable. Yeah. They go in. They don't have but one small ship, and the first thing they do is fly in towards some place just to wreck everybody. Mm -hmm. And then they don't care. They then they get blown up. They're done for the day. And then they come in tomorrow and do it again. How do you stop that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I think there are some... I think there are... They, they don't want to have it to where they're just banning people. They don't want they that. Don't, they don't want that. And it, it, What I they could do is... If you, if you have pad ramming on your record... Yeah. That if you approach it without, without authorization for landing... Or if you deviate from course, you're just, they're just going to instantly take you out. Yeah. They're not, if, if like, for example, if you're a new player and you deviate and the game's records show that you're a new player and you, you're, you're kind of flying around erratically because you haven't figured out, you know, which way's up. Yeah. It's going to be much more forgiving. You're going to get warnings. You're going to get alerts. It's going to be scary, but it's like, get away from the building and go fly somewhere else crazy. Yeah. But you're not going to, if you're not... You know, if you're not really doing it, if, if, if it's like you don't have that record of pad ramming, where if you do run into somebody, either accidentally or deliberately, and you get that pad rammer status, you veer off that course later, they're just going to they're just gonna take you out. Yeah. They're not going to let you get near. They're just going to open fire. Yep. And they have gun emplacements around the ports that if you start approaching those ports within weapons range... And um, I think what they could do is take a little bit of Elite Dangerous's page on something is we have the ability to power off our weapons. Mm -hmm. That when you're when the ship starts, the weapons don't automatically come online. No. They do right now. But if you approach a station with your weapons armed and online, mm -hmm. that could be a fine. Yeah. Well, in Elite Dangerous, it. your guns are inside of well, see, the, 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 the ports other part inside of it, the ship. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying is, Elite Dangerous, they disable your weapon. Yeah. You don't get a choice. Yeah. No, wait, do you? Uh, no, wait, you can't pop out your guns. Is they they get really antsy when you when you do. They get antsy when you power them up, don't they? Yeah. Where is it that that? Oh, I'm thinking of. Okay, no, it's it's Star Citizen that where they disable your weapons. Yeah. If you're in a, if you're in a, if you're, yeah, okay. So I'm, 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 I'm getting my thing. Your confused. weapons are always deployed in Star Citizen. They're whereas always in deployed, Elite but they can be powered they get, down. They get retracted into, um, base. Right. They, 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 in they, the they go inside base. What I'm, what I'm thinking is, is instead of disabling the weapons, because remember, you never know if something's going to happen. You can get fines for firing weapons, you know, reckless discharge, stuff yeah. like that. But yep. also have the option of just the ships don't automatically power up weapons. And then you can power them up later when you're outside. But if you come in and you're, and you're online, you're going to shoot somebody on the pad. You know, first off, they're going to get you might get you might get a warning, power down your weapons immediately or you will be fined. Continue to violate and, you know, we will open fire. Mm -hmm. Are your weapons off? And that's one thing you can start with that. Mm -hmm. And that way you don't always have to have it locked down. Don't do the kind of crazy thing they did where it's like, you know, the Thargoids show up and start smashing on everybody. Mm -hmm. and people can't even get off the pads because the, 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 the damn Thargoids are pad ramming everybody and, and shooting them when they're trying to take off. Yeah. The whole Gnosis incident. You don't want that. No, no, no. That, that was just... That was Frontier Developments being mean. Yeah, what they did there to the to the people in the Gnosis. That was that just was them it. just being outright just mean yeah. to them. That was just wrong in so many ways. That, that was, that was, was wrong. Players for that. A lot of people quit for that. Yeah. They, they keep they keep coming up with all these I events and incidents that make people quit. Oh. The timber update. The art. The the, the the carriers and all the prices for that the, the gnosis the odyssey launch like why do they keep coming up the console thing why do they keep finding ways to chase people off i don't know 
I mean, I mean, like, look at some of the big YouTubers like Exegius. He hasn't. What did we say? He hadn't done anything. He hadn't. Like, he hadn't done anything in six months. Yeah, or is it, it was six months or nine months? It was a long time. It, it's been a long time. He hasn't produced yeah, any almost content. A year. It's a broken year. And his YouTube and his Twitch channel, he hasn't done anything in a long time. Yeah, I mean, I hope nothing's happened to him. I hope he's still out there, but you know, we it's like he just vanished. Yeah. Did he just quit? Because you know, like he did time, why? Odyssey came around the time Odyssey. He came played out. Odyssey for a little while. And then he, he did left. a few updates on it, and then just stopped. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping that I'm not missing out on something that something has happened to him, and I don't know about it. I hope that's not the case. Oh. I hope it's just you know it's just you know life is taking over. He, but has he just quit? Is life taking over? I don't know what happened. No, oh. and then, I mean you have like um willing Commander Will and Kate, they've moved on to. They've um, moved on. They've moved on to Star um, Citizen. They produce some Down really Earth amazing had content, a great, actually. Down to Earth Astronomy, yeah, had a good interview with uh, Space Tomato the other day, and they were talking about, yeah. you know, a lot of this stuff. We're in Space Tomatoes Org, the uh, Garden Initiative. We're in his org. I liked his commercial. That's what got me in there. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they, they had that. They had those commercial and... Um, that that theirs was pretty epic. I oh, like. the one if they shut down, feel like dangerous after you know as you said, if, if, or if they just put the game into maintenance mode and not do anything with it after a few updates and bug fixes to Odyssey. The one that's going to be really impacted the most by that is going to be Burp Hit. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, they've been they they they're gonna they they are so focused on. Elite Dangerous, that it's yeah. going to heavily impact them. It's going to really disappoint Obsidian Ant, but it's not going to hurt him too much because he's already Ant's been covering He's already that diversifying. Stuff. He's really um, big into. He likes Microsoft like Flight Simulator. simulator. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where he's moving slowly. Yeah. But he likes space games in general. I think he's really looking forward to. Um, what's the Bethesda game? Um, Starfield. Starfield. He's looking forward to Starfield. Yeah, he's looking forward to that. Um, so he's, he's got his eyes to the horizon. Yeah. And even he's gotten really dark when it comes to, uh, I mean, Mr. Positive is really kind of dampened down. Yeah. When it comes to, you can tell it, it's just breaking his heart. He wants it to succeed. Yeah. Hell, I want it to succeed. I mean, I'm not sitting here as a, as an elite dangerous hater. I want the game fixed. Yeah. I do. I really want it fixed. The VR experience is like better than yeah. anything out there. It's, it's amazing to play that game in VR. I mean, yeah. I've had times where it's just, just so immersive and just so... I remember that we, I was at one of the Guardian sites mm -hmm. and I was we in VR. We streamed that in VR. I, we, yeah, it was and, in VR. And we I remember that. being there and not knowing the first time that first time I was down and I had my Anaconda parked and I had a couple of um, point defenses mounted to the top of it and i didn't know this that those will shoot down those missiles and i was just sitting there and i'm looking out and it's like this thing like you saw from iraq where there's like these missiles these, these things are going up in the air and shooting stuff and i'm just looking around going what is that and i'm just looking around and it's so immersive and you it was and I, so fun we were collecting stuff on that one site Mm -hmm. and these drones kept popping up and they started shooting yeah. missiles in the air and our point defense systems were just blowing them out of the sky and it was yeah. like awesome the yeah, entire and see, that time was, that was the second time for me because remember that's how i, I learned about it because i had, had it happen because i didn't know about it the first time and i just happened to have the right thing mounted to the top of the ship and there it happened and it's like you know it's like it was so cool it was just so immersive and now uh, no, it's like the the planets, the, the the way the planets look in the Odyssey update. It's just, just don't they just don't look. They, they look, look like, like a ball rubber of plastic. balls. You know, look like look balls like of Play-Doh. They don't look right. No, it, it it doesn't. And the planets all look just generic. I mean, even when you're on the surface, it looks it's bad. Just generic. Very generic. I mean, it's like amateurish. Yeah, and is, I've seen is, I've were... seen people create videos of what it would be like to fly a ship in full atmosphere, uh -huh. and it's amazing looking. Yeah, and it's like why can't we just do this? Why why can't we just? And it's like it's not like Planet Tech 
it's hard to do these days. I mean, freaking No Man's Sky, a 12-man team, 20-man team can pull it off. Mm -hmm. And and Elite Dangerous can't? They've got over 100 employees. And, and they CIG can't pull did it with freaking CryEngine. Yeah. The freaking CryEngine or the, you know, or, Amazon or... bent out of whack lumber yard. Well, it's, it's they, not even they, that anymore. They they bent and twisted they, that they, engine so much it's new. <laughs> they have so re-engineered that thing, and they um, you look at the planets in, in you you look at the planets in 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 um, in Star Citizen, and it's just amazing. And it's like you know they're they're like they're like we're not done yet. Mm -hmm. We're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have flipping seasons. That was the other thing they announced recently. They didn't announce it. But I think Todd Pappy kind of said, yeah, we're going to do seasons. Yeah. They're, they're going to do seasons. So you're going to have times of the year at a certain spot where you're going to have green and, and, and grass. And then later on in the year, it's going to be cold and icy. Yeah. And that you're going to orbit the star. And, you, you know, it's like, that's going to affect trade. People are like, why would you want to do that? It's because it's going to affect the game's gameplay. It's going to affect mm -hmm. trade. For example, if, 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 if Microtech and um is very near um um crusader that's going to produce one type of trade route yep whereas if they separate and it's on the opposite side of the system it's going to produce a very different trade route mm -hmm. the, the trade routes will be affected just from the distance travel and ships that could normally make the jump between micro would have to get assistance or some yeah, other would thing need, yeah would need help or you or would stops. need to definitely use the Lagrange point stations yeah. to jump. Where, uh, where at certain times of the year you can make the trip really easy. Other times of the year, no, you got You're going to have to go the long way around. Yep. So those Lagrange point stations are going to become very important. And in, 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 in certain certain times of the year, you can do certain missions. You do one mission at at a good time of year. It's going to be sunny out. It's going to be mm -hmm. pretty. It's going to be bright. It's going to be clear skies. You will see all the action. And then you go during winter time. Yeah. And it's just, you're going to try to do the same mission. And if you're just not going to see anything, that's you're not going to determine you're not gonna land your, properly. That's going to determine your loadout too, because you're going to need a suit that can handle right. low temperatures. You might have massive temperature shifts where a certain mission, a certain time of year, you could go out in unarmored or mm -hmm. you could be, you know, without your helmet. And other time of the year, you're going to have to have heavy weather gear. Yep. And that'd be the same mission. And you're going to have to know about what's going on that time of year. And as cold as Microtech is, certain times of the year it'll be warmer, and other times of the year it's going to be like Breathing. death if you don't have special gear. Right. And you could do the same freaking mission, the same freaking cargo run between the two same points, and it can be completely different. Yep. Because it just happens to be what time of year you chose to do it. Mm-hmm. And that may not be real world years. I mean, I don't know what in game cycle I'm going to be, but you know, it might be a few months or something. But I don't think their their day and night cycles are definitely not um, not real time. Real time. So I would not think, meant to be. I would think planets would make full rotations in maybe a couple of hours time. Well, I don't. Well, we're talking about orbits. I would expect the orbit to take longer. That's what like I mean. Maybe, it's a full, a full not orbit. A, not, might not, not hours. Be... No, that's too fast. No, 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 no. That's way too fast. Maybe I whole would say, days. No, no, no. I would say a couple of months to do it right. A couple of months. Yeah. Maybe like a month. Or it depends on the depends on the planet's orbit. That would if be too. Really, yeah, you're right. That would be if way it's, too if fast. If it's closer in, if it's closer in, it might be you know three or four days or a week. Few, few if it's weeks. Really to... far out, it might be a month. Microtech might take a month or two to make might a, take a full month to get around rotation, whereas Hurston might change much more rapid. Because remember, Mercury is really close to the sun, and Mercury just laps around the sun now nearly yeah. two months in, in two months. I think I think it's like two months. I think is what it takes to get yeah. around. It's stupid fast, and that's the thing because of the scaling that they've done. Hurston's the size of Mercury's orbit. Yeah, I mean, not I, Hurst, I mean, the Stanton system is the size I, of Mercury's I think, orbit. I think the thing is, there is Elite Dangerous is universe is more scaled correctly. Yeah, mostly. Mostly. Um, but the planetary details are just wrong. Wrong. Whereas 
or citizen's planetary detail, what you actually encounter while you're out on the field is much more detail. But what that sits on is a, a, is, is a, is a, is a, is a model as opposed to more realistic where the scalings are smaller, the, um, the distances are shorter, you know, they're, they're, they're like one fifth the size or something, you know, the orb, the orbits and day night cycles are, are much different. So, you know, it, it's definitely a different animal when it comes to that. Yeah. You know, so there, there are some give and takes that even Star Citizen has had to do. It's like, was it, um, take it all the way to the edge and then bring it back to what they call it, the rule of cool or something like that. Yeah. The rule it's of where cool. It's at least, the where it's at least fun and immersive, but without immersion breaking. Yes. You know, or so, so realistic that it becomes uh, not fun. Yeah. Yep. I've heard him. Them? I've heard Jared use that term a lot. The rule of mm -hmm. the rule of cool. I've heard him use that a lot. Yeah. How Star long Thursday. have we been on? Because I think we've covered just about everything. Oh, we've been. It's been going for like an hour and forty minutes. Jeez. <laughs> oh, but this is our first podcast uh, on this. Uh, and there's something we're gonna i'd like this to be at least a weekly thing where um we get together and talk about just different subjects and cover some of the some of the week's news and then uh talk about a uh a, a, a top subject like we have here where you know if you if you just had the patience you would see this game's actually is making progress they're actually making a game I that's think, finally starting to shape up i i think the thing is let me let me tell you let me tell you what, what why i'm not worried about it and why i'm worried about frontier yeah it's because frontier the progress they have been making has been crazily inconsistent yeah if they had it where like they're working on it and they had regular patches i mean they've been patching but they've been mostly bug fixing but where Odyssey wasn't such a wreck and they had small patch, small patch, small patch, small patch, adding content, 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 big patch, do yeah. bug fixes, and then went back to content. Sort of like how how um, No Man's Sky does it. They haven't had the best I wouldn't, track I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about it so much, but yeah. they've had these points of time where they just, not only do they have years worth of drought, they, they shut down some of the most basic stuff like um, like the, like the, um, what do you call it? The Galnet? Mm -hmm. They shut Galnet down for a while and all mm -hmm. that. It's like, why? Yeah. You, you're just running out of content for your game? Like What's going on? And whereas No Man's Sky, they had some rough patches, but they've come to, they do about three to four major patches a year. You know, you can expect about three to four a year where they have major releases. Like, Star Citizen does for a yeah. year. Like, let's get back to Braden's message. He was saying that they want to focus on the story that they're telling with, with Elite Danger. What story? What story? There is no story. I mean, and see, that's what? the thing is they're they're inconsistent. Yeah. It's like that. No story is something they've been consistent about. It's like there's no narrative there. They've been. I know that there was supposedly some story they were telling. Yeah, in Galnet. Well, there was a gal net. There's no in-game represent. There's no in-game representation in there. No, I mean, there's no gameplay associated with you any of that You just wind up stuff. getting a community goal and a bunch of narrative. And they said they didn't want to do that anymore, and they're still doing it. Yeah. And like I said, the updates aren't consistent, and and that's that's where I'm like, I I don't know what the, I don't know what to say for them. Oh, and the fact that they're taking down the console release in order to work on story not doesn't bode well. It doesn't bode well. It, it really sets doesn't. off it sets off all sorts of alarms because we've been a lot of people have been dealing with the way they do things for a while and we get to the point to where you you understand, oh, they're not gonna do anything with this after all. They're, they're, this is their sort of way of saying, oh, we're done. There is a lot of, it feels like we're done here. We're just trying to figure out how to get out of it. Feels yeah. Really dangerous. Yep. 
and they bring they they bring David Braden in. He always pops in when things are really bad. Yeah. Or they've got some like stupidly critical announcement, and usually it's not good news. No. No. Because they've been slowly chipping away at the foundations of that thing, and now having console. Because he's not get... actively involved in the development of the no. game like Chris Roberts is. Chris Roberts, uh, he's, Chris Roberts he's or in Sean there Murray in the trenches still... with everybody yeah. else. Chris Roberts and Sean Murray are still working on the game. David Braden probably has touched like, it. Like Roberts moved back to England so that he can work on Squadron yeah, he's 42. He's closing it out. They, they said, he said that they could close it out, which means that should mean, you know, everything being equal, that should mean that they're trying to get it done. Yeah. You know, and it's been out, it's been in development long enough that they ought to have a finished product by now. Yeah. And um, they, we'll they, they do need to get something out finally. They, they do need to do that. This will be the biggest help for them to get Squadron 42 out is to show people A, they can actually finish a product. Yes. B, that it's not a tech demo because you have a released product on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And C, we can actually see what kind of quality they can do when a product is finished. Yeah. Because EA, you know, it's coming out, it's gonna be buggy. But oh. Bez does buggy by default. Yes. You know, <laughs> what does a what does a finished project? Well, they, they talk about all this fidelity and all this other stuff. What does a finished product look like from CIG? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to know what that looks like. Yep. What does a finished product look like? We haven't seen that yet. Um, we've seen bits and pieces of stuff. But we've we not seen need a, We need another product. vertical slice of, of, of uh, Squadron 42. That we would help, or just that. release the damn thing. Yes. Get it done. Um, they they really need to they really need to get it done. Yeah, they do. Um, because that being done will also give us the you know Gen Twelve renderer and stuff like that. Because they've shifted. What it is now is they they're routing all of their new stuff, Rue Squadron Forty Two into the PU. Mm -hmm. Before it was like, come to the PU, then we go to Squadron. Now they've reversed it. Yeah. They've reversed the neutron flow, <laughs> as Doctor Who would say. Now everything is going from, you know, coming into coming into Squadron 42, it's being fleshed out more detail, and then it's getting added to Star Citizen. For example, does this mean that we're more apt to get the Gen 12 renderer done, you know, mm -hmm. that we really need? Yeah. You know, what does that mean for, you and know... The, the, the Gen 12 renderer, what that is, is... Right now, the renderer is not well designed for multi-threading. It runs on just maybe one or two threads. It's Whereas this will be, um, it will look at how many threads are available and spread the load out more. It'll be more in intelligent optimization of multi-threading or rendering. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be Vulcan. Vulcan support. Which, which will open the door for them to be able to bring it into VR, which they have yep. several VR enthusiasts. And we've um, seen Star Citizen running, not super great, but playable on a Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. It can be done. It can be done. And I, I think it'll be able to, I think once they get the Gen 12 renderer and we get Vulcan rendering done, I think it'll run just fine on the Steam Deck, and I think it'll be able to run in a headset. And the game has got a lot of haptic stuff built into yeah. it, just because of the way it's built. That will make it very VR friendly, because the... you have consoles and terminals and everything that are in-game yeah. now. The way the game is being designed, the way they're designing the UI and everything, it, it is... It's going to be VR-friendly out of the designed box. designed with VR totally in mind. Mm -hmm. totally in mind and it's just going to be incredible in vr oh yeah once they it, once they get gonna that be, far it is going to be so amazing because they're definitely going to need that renderer they're definitely going to need the optimized renderer they're definitely going to need vulcan support for mm -hmm. better performance vulcan also better optimization of uh, cpu and gpu perform thread performance they're going to need mm -hmm. that yeah. And it's gonna look amazing once they get there. And they're gonna have to have that before they launch Squadron 42 because Squadron 42 requires it. Well, we will be using it. We'll be, yeah. we'll be released we'll on be it. We'll be using yeah. it. Oh, this has been a packed oh. episode. 
Yeah. This has definitely been many packed there's, episodes. There's a lot coming. There's a lot that we want to see. There's mm -hmm. a lot that, you know, like, there's all the different controversies between Star Citizen and, 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 um, um, what's that stupid CCP game? Eve, Eve Online. Eve Online. Eve Online, yeah. Elite Dangerous, No Man's Sky, you know, the big four there. You know, there's all kinds of controversies between them. Definitely. Um, but I think, um, I think it's going to be fine. I think people have, are kind of freaking out over it. It's like, just the thing to do for everyone who's kind of freaking out over it is just take a step back. You know, you, when, when it comes out, play a little bit of it when the patch comes out, put it mm -hmm. down, go do something else for a yeah. while, take a breather. I mean, that's what we you do. Know? I mean, yeah, we're playing I mean, I, Final Fantasy XIV right now. We're, we're yeah. building, built new characters, and we're on uh, back on Diablos. Yeah, but I've got right here next to me is a box with all my um, OTAS stuff in it. That you know, if I go, to, if I want to play Star Citizen, it only takes a few minutes to pull out and you know plug in and you know get things running and, and do the updates, or whatever. And because I want to play three seventeen, because I definitely. I want to play this. I mean, if I don't think the Scorpius is going to make 317.0, I think it'll probably be a 317.1 patch. Most likely, yeah. But I still want to, you know, kind of get in and kind of spend some time in there. Um, hopefully, they'll make a refueler available so we can kind of toy with it and see what it's like. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to get one. I don't see the need. I mean, I, to me, the Odyssey, to me, the Odyssey is the biggest thing in the world. Oh, it'll be the big thing is what if the fuel rats open a branch in open a uh, branch star in citizen. star citizen oh, or they enough well the last i've heard that so many of them have left that they're having trouble just doing oh their well basic think about operations. this the fuel rats had a whole thing for the consoles yeah all their console fuel rat guys are what are they gonna do i mean because all the console players you know they're not shutting it down but there's there's like it's the end of days for them yeah they could hey come over hey you you guys are gonna be necessary soon in the, in the next coming months and you're gonna be I able mean, to get paid for it without having to do any jankiness yeah because you can charge for it you know the new fueling system allows you to charge for it yep it's it's a legit profession that you can do and there's whole mechanics for hey, it. hey you make money and make money in the game by uh selling fuel and you'll you be able to fly out to people who need it or 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 whatever and then you'll be able to have fleets of ships going out and mining stuff and mm -hmm. bringing bringing it back to be refined the quantum fuel to be refined because i think the um the um starfarer will also be a refinery as well have a refinery on the ship and there'll be no, no, dedicated no, not, dedicated refineries as well no, no, no. They're, they're. It's not gonna have an. I don't oh, think it's, it's gonna have a refine. No, it's, it's just, not... a, it's just, a, it's just a fueler. No. Oh, it's just a fueler. Yeah. Okay. The um, there is the the actual um processing of it and doing all that. They don't have that ship, and we don't, we don't. They haven't announced that ship yet. Okay. That, that ship, that they, the, the, the refinery ship has not been a announced. Refinery ship. I do. The, I the know only they do plan ship on that has refinery functionality right now that we know mm -hmm. the name of, and that's the Odyssey. Ah. The dedicated refinery where you can just, you know, take in the um, the saddlebags from the um, other ships and store them and process them, and you know, be able to have the cargo available for transport. There hasn't even been an announcement for that ship, even a name yet. Okay. So there's not even a name for that ship. All we right. just know that they're going to work on a refinery ship. Uh, so the okay. only ship that we know that that's the thing is they might put it in the Odyssey first as a as a as a test, and yes. then actually work out the actual refiner ship. Yeah. But I think the Odyssey will be a test bed for refining. But still, if enough of them leave elite dangerous and they don't have a home they got a home they're, always, they're always welcome in star citizen they're always welcome me. i mean people will love especially once they get pyro out yeah that's what i expect it to be of the need for them yeah is people are going to be like 
I really want the fuel rats here because yes. I'm out here in the middle of nowhere and there's nobody on right now on this server that wants to give me the time of day. Mm -hmm. I think once server meshing comes in, the other part of it is being on a server where somebody's asking for help. Mm -hmm. Right now, the server dividing lines are kind of a problem. So that needs to be solved, too. Yes. Anyway, this has been one heck of a packed. It's the first episode of The Professor and Friends. Uh, I want to thank everybody who uh, watched our video and listened through all of our ranting and our raving and our, uh, our just hopeful talk about Star Citizen. There's we do, so much we are negativity. I just want to be positive about it. Yeah, we just want to be positive about it, and we know what we have, what we have seen tells us they're passionate about this game. They want it to succeed as much as we do. Yeah. Oh. No. Oh. Uh, as we'll I said, there. as I said, I want this to be a uh, weekly thing. We talk about uh, some news and then a, uh, a larger subject. Uh, every week, you down for that? Doing this uh, at least once a week. A day. Oh, okay. Possibly. So uh, we'll be seeing a future episode to this, and then there's that the the bigger mainline professor um, show. Uh, probably, depending on how much work that goes into that, that might be only once a, once a month. I mean, how much work is going to go into that? Because I'm going to start recording some stuff for that this week. Uh, for that, I'm going to have to do a lot of recording. Oh, I got this disk space. I'm going to have to use the server for this. For storing stuff. But, that's been our first episode of The Professor and Friends. Really big show. Uh, hope you liked it. Um... If you like this video, consider subscribing, click that bell icon so you get uh, notifications of, you know, future videos. Uh, also, don't forget to check out the Gamers Bay community that's on MeWe. That's a heavily privacy-focused social media platform that doesn't run ads and doesn't sell your data. Oh, and also another thing yeah. is we are on we've been playing Final Fantasy a lot lately. We're on Diablos. Yep. So we've been we've been we've been hanging around the um exquisite free company. Mm-hmm. So oh, um, and I created a Zorch Central um fellowship. Okay. Also. Yep. So okay. I created one on there. I don't know if anybody's joined yet. I I have to go back into the game and and look, because I don't know if anyone's joined or 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 submitted applications or anything for it. I just, they can just created join. it today. Yeah, like, they can just join. Depends on yeah. what you set your targets for, but they can just join. Yep. Because uh, I think these we're make we're do we're we're moving at a slower pace with these characters. We are not rushing through the game. We're just doing everything. We're doing all the quests. Not even streaming it, really. I uh, like yeah. like like Asmund Gold. I I want to enjoy the game, so I'm not yeah. even streaming it. I mean, there are other games that I can stream. I could stream, you know, um, Lost Ark, or 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 something like that. Or I can. Any I've, Elden Ring? Don't know if I want to get into Elden Ring or <laughs> not. <laughs> After watching other people play it, I struggle with other games as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Even let's let's put it this way: that's one game that does not give you a participation award. No. That's that's the other thing. All these devs just screaming and crying about about it because their game our horizon you know horizon zero not horizon, horizon zero but horizon forbidden west it's like 87 or something and metacritic and then elden ring gets slightly higher than them and they're just completely freaking out over it because elden ring used an older engine it's not as graphically intensive, yet people are just absolutely loving it. 
You know, you know, it doesn't, it they doesn't... obviously didn't listen to Qui-Gon when he said there's always a bigger fish. <laughs> anyway, we're... We're moving on. We'll see you next week for the next episode. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>